Being a project manager can be very stressful from dealing with challenging clients to team members that may appear to just roll off the project at any given moment, dealing with budget cuts. There are several factors that can go into play when it comes to having to bear the burden, having to bear the responsibility of being a project manager. Now, keep in mind, we choose to do these jobs, right? So it's not something where as a project manager, there's an expectation that it should be easy, that it should be something that is straightforward. However, the nature of project management is dealing with uncertainty and that uncertainty can often result in complexity and change management and being able to manage the project as well as your client in a way that is going to lead to a successful result. So in my 10 plus years of being a project manager, what I have found over the time to be the most stressful is the various things that I mentioned, but I've also found ways to work through that. And I really would say in order to be able to manage, you have to find ways to work sustainably. At the very start of a project, it is super important to establish two things. One is going to be a good rapport with your client. Now, naturally, that's going to be something that happens over time. But from the very beginning, having a conversation with your client, with your customer, to understand what their vision is, to understand what their non-negotiables are, having that conversation and oftentimes documenting it in something like a project charter is going to be super helpful because the project charter becomes the foundation of your project. And then from there, the second thing that's really important is having a robust project plan. Now I have another video where I talk about on my page where I talk about building a robust robust project plan. And the importance of having a robust project plan is such that you can use that plan to execute against, to make sure that their vision is coming to life. And stress for me at times has resulted in the need to have conversations with my manager to make sure that they are aware that I'm feeling the pressure to realign myself to understand what exactly is causing that stress. And so what I've arrived at are a few things that I've used to help me in terms of having a sustainable way of working, because that's ultimately, I think, what the goal would be is how do I create an environment for myself and as much as I can that allows for me to work sustainably and not burn out. And this doesn't mean that burnout doesn't happen. None of us are perfect, but what are the things that I can work towards? What are the habits that I could work towards to help me hopefully prevent burnout? Or if I am burned out, get me to a place of working more sustainably. In addition to the two things that I mentioned before of the rapport with your client and building a project plan is prioritizing for yourself prioritizing your time specifically. As project managers, it is often expected that we wear multiple hats. You need to be careful with that, however, because if we are also expected to manage multiple projects, then you can maybe see where we run into the issue. The issue. The example I'm going to give illustrates generalizing versus being a specialist. So let's say for instance, I'm a general contractor and I am working on building homes. I'm probably going to have someone who specializes in plumbing, someone who specializes in framing. I don't have many examples because this is not my domain. I work in IT project management, but nonetheless, you get the picture. I have someone who's going to specialize versus if I have, or I may, right? So if I have someone who specializes in plumbing, then I can be more rest assured that this person knows plumbing pretty well, that they've probably seen the sim similar challenges. And so they're going to do that job well, or they should do that job more sufficiently than someone who is a generalist, right? So if you're a generalist, then you probably know a little bit about everything. And so in those cases, there's that risk that if I put a generalist on a pub on a plumbing project, Sure, they may do just fine, but it also may take them longer or they may not do just as fine as the person who is specializing. So it's the same thing when it comes to project management. As a project manager, for us, sometimes we are expected to also be sort of a business analyst. So to document and to understand the requirements. 
that is another job in and of itself. It's another set of responsibilities and expectations that come with it. But it's not unheard of that project managers do this. However, if a project manager now has to do these two things, be a project manager and also be, be a VA, their time becomes more limited. Your time becomes more limited. And so if the expectation is now that you're scaling across all these projects doing these two roles, you can see now you're going to have less time than if you were just doing project management. And I am aware that some of this is completely out of our control, that this is our employers are the one who set what the expectations are. However, if you do have some authority in terms of what your statement of work looks like, meaning, especially in those cases when you do have a BA, rely on the BA. If you do have someone who, for your types of projects, you have an architect. Like, so for me, I work on a lot of software implementation projects. And so we will have a tech lead, we'll have an architect. They specialize in those areas. I am not going to now go into these areas and try to understand at the detail that they do, whatever the solution is or whatever the solution should be. What I do need to understand is, has my architect been engaged properly? Do they have an understanding of the requirements and have they completed the solution architecture? If they've done those things, great, right? This is not to say that I shouldn't know any of that information, but illustrating the point that I was making earlier, in order for me to scale, in order for me to do more projects, take on more projects, I cannot go to that level of detail and think that I'm going to have the bandwidth to take on more projects sufficiently. So a lot of project management comes down to what you do up front in terms of understanding what the vision is, creating your project plan, and then throughout is going to be prioritizing. Prioritizing your time and prioritizing the time of the team members who are on the project in terms of how the scheduling is happening, the dependency management, and all of that. When you are able to get to that place where these things are in harmony, then it helps you to create an environment where you can work sustainably and hopefully not burn out, and hopefully not have to deal with as much stress. I'm not going to tell you that we're going to be in a place where we never have to deal with stress. That is the nature of the job, is to bring, to go from a place of ambiguity to certainty, so there's stress that comes with it. But there are definitely ways that you can take on the situation and make it something that is more sustainable for you to be in than stressful. If you want to hear more project management tips, you can follow me. You can sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can also sign up for my introduction to project management course. Those last two options are available through the link on my profile.